Welcome to DWI episode 19. Welcome back for those of y'all at home that's tuning in. Uwe, definitely got a couple more subscribers, man. How many we up to now? Shit, we almost at 200. Shout out to the, you know what I mean, to the new subscribers. And the old ones for sure. Wax, how you feeling about that, man? Shit, I like it, man. I like to see those numbers going up. I I want some more, though, because it doesn't cost anybody anything. Not one damn thing. Not one dime. Just like, comment, and subscribe, and we will keep bringing right. y'all the freshest shit out there. Right, we Definitely. have a special guest in the building again. Welcome back, Duke Uncle, Uncle Duke. You agree? Yes, sir. The Definitely DWI number. family, DWI family growing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We, we trying to take it to the roof, man. Like, so, and, uh, you know, all we do yeah. is spread love. So Spreading love. Now, listen, Uli, we snuck into the movies last week. So this week, I want to take it another notch further. <clears throat> Y'all see that studio across the street? Let's hit that shit up. What you think, Wax? I'm with it. Man. Do? Yeah. Okay. Doovy? I'm there. Let's go. Fuck it. Let's roll. Yo, you see all this shit, man? Look at this shit, man. Archives everywhere, man. All this old shit that we grew up on, man. Yo, I know this ain't a bone album, man. Listen, creeping on the come up? Mm. When did that shit mm. drop, Wax? June 21st, 1994. Damn, you were specific as yeah, fuck. Yeah, I was on it, yeah. man. I did my homework. No doubt, man. So let me ask you this. Uwe, also, what was you doing exactly when that album dropped? Probably running around. You know what I mean? I don't remember. It was the summer, so it was probably nice as hell. Oh, it was I mean? hot out. Yeah, right, so we were running around listening to that shit. I remember hearing, I remember seeing the video on Rap City. Like, what the fuck? And old boy was like, it's not about rap. Okay. It's not about rappers. Well, what's it about? But it is about those thugs. <laughs> and old she, girl start snapping and shit. That's what was her name, dude? Tasha. Oh, man. She because can't. she lets you know. <laughs> How did she let you she know? Was like, and Tasha. <laughs> like, okay, Tasha. <laughs> she have seen that. her again. Because <laughs> she said her name on the track. They were like, <laughs> Tasha had her five minutes of fame. Bitch. Hell yeah! No, but I, I I watched a um a story on that. With uh, it was Crazy Bone. It was Crazy Bone and Lazy Bone. Both told pretty much the same story. They said she was um she was outside the studio. Like, okay. Just, like she was trying to come in and like audition or some shit for for Easy E, and they just heard her and was like, and they they already had the song already done, but they were singing the hook. And then she came in there and ripped that motherfucker down and turned that shit into Wait a, a platinum minute. hit. Wait a minute. So it was them singing It's the Thuggish Ruggish Bone? Probably in their own kind of way, yeah. But it wouldn't that it, probably it, wouldn't have, it probably was all right, but it wouldn't it wouldn't have hit like it did without Hell when no. Tasha went to church in that yeah, motherfucker in her booth. And then like you said, dude, she let motherfuckers know and Tasha. Exactly. It was like, you <laughs> know what I mean? Too. Hell, Mevin and the Blue Notes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit. Y'all motherfuckers ain't gonna never go platinum without me. <laughs> so she definitely put her fucking foot in that shit, as, you know what I mean, black folks would say, man. She put her foot in that shit. She said, I'm David Ruffin. These are temptations. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm Tasha, and this is Bone. <laughs> now, so shout let me ask you. Shout, shout out to Tasha, because you know what I mean? This show's definitely about giving you your propers. Definitely. But let me ask you this. How do you feel about the second joint off of that album that banged out? I For mean, the I'm, love of money. Yeah. That's, that's what it was. was. For the love of money was my shit. And that fucking beat is so fucking hard. And they gave you like a, a extra couple of minutes of just instrumental yeah. for you to get your shit on. Right. You know what I mean? And that's so what you was into. If with you was freestyling, you had a couple mm-hmm. minutes to murder that shit. With some freaky shit happening too. Like I had the bitch getting fucked in there in the background. Right. <laughs> you remember that? For the love of my boots, boom, boom. Man, that shit dropped. That was probably one of the dopest fucking tracks that I heard. At that period of time, to change the game. Yeah. Bone with that harmonizing, that singing. Now, mind you, it's our ninth grade year. We're getting ready to be sophomores, man. Right. I remember, man, my pop was a preacher, man. So a lot of that shit, 
I had already listened to it because I moved up to the castle and, you know what I mean, I had already known about it, but that summer, sneaking and listening to Bone was a damn fucking chore almost, Hell man. Yeah. I had to sneak and listen to it and shit. Like, huh? Nothing. <laughs> what you listening to in there? Nothing? <laughs> Nothing at all? A commercial? Like, it was something to do, man, but I had to get my dose of that shit because it was just, it was an epidemic, Uli. Right. And then that Easy e, easy e verse, like, we ain't, because before that, we hadn't heard about, we haven't heard no Easy in years. Probably. In years, since NWA. Right. Or then, right and, after that. Right. And then he came through with that shit, like, and then I'm standing on the corner straight, slanging rocks. Uh -huh. Oh, uh -huh. shit, hiccup the motherfucking cops. cops. And my dad's. I duck and I hide behind the tree. Right. Making, making sure the motherfuckers don't, don't see me. That's that shit right there. Yeah, man. Now dig it. Easy was one of the forefathers of gangster rap. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to Easy E definitely, man, because he was one of the cats that held it down when it came to dropping that shit, man. That was one of the only verses you could spit on that song. Right. Because mm -hmm. you, you understood it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Eat that. That sounds so good. What the fuck is a nigga said? But it was hard. And it was harmonizing. It was like a harmonizing rap group, if you will, man. Right. And they elevated their style. It ain't like Bone just stayed still. Like you said on that second album. I'm telling that Mr. Bill Collector. And gonna have to pay the price. Motherfucker, the Like, dang it. Now, mind you, everybody in the world sings it the way we do. And if you don't say that, you're fucking lying. Right. But while you're doing that shit, I need you to do us a favor. What's that? Click like. Okay. Subscribe. Right. And leave a comment. Drop this shit. This, these are bricks of our childhood that we're giving y'all. Right. Where were y'all at when this shit came out? Right. You know what I'm saying? What were y'all doing? The summer of 2000, or shit. The Jesus. summer of 1994 was clapping. I'm about to say, and, I mean, not that it means anything, but this was like a couple weeks before my birthday. So this was like the lead into, Thanks. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, here y'all cancer niggas I, go. I, I can't, can't help it. I gotta hear it. Like, was it cancer. before your, let me guess. Before yes, it was birthday. five days before my birthday. You know, <laughs> and, and, and you? Son. And you know what I'm saying? See, that's that shit I be talking about, y'all. Oh, oh, no, no, no. All day. They Definitely. were like 14, 15 years old. We was under hooping. That way. Then, then go up to uh to stop and go and get a tea. Yeah. Oh man, it's that nectar. Right. Yeah. That's Sweet that second nectar. avenue. Shout out to uh right. stop and go. Or, Remember, uh, or your granny would get hit us, hit us off with them gallons of water. Yeah, that's my that was my aunt and uncle. That's okay. that's my cousin Eva and them grandparents. Uh, Paul's gas station. Mm -hmm. Nigga. And you go get the Cherokee Reds. Uh, Freak uh, diabetes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 25 yeah. cents for a can of Cherokee Reds. Who stop. had the coldest beverage in the hood back in the day? The coldest bev? Probably. Pauls. Pauls is one of them yeah. ones. As soon as you hit that fucking People coming through that alley from the basketball court. Wait, wait, wait. High school. Fucking right. Wax, one, one more time. Hit that shit. Like, <laughs> nigga, when you hit that shit, it was almost like back in the day with that uh, that one movie when he was like, <laughs> I mean, you nip that some bitch. The only thing colder than that that would give you instant brain freeze was Dairy Queen's fucking freezies. Oh, Sam line. line. You ain't lying. Those yeah, motherfucking line. Dairy Queen freezies, that was a whole different line because we're hooping in 90 degree weather at the chains. Shout out to Six for having the chains available for us. And it's not even a grocery store. Well, well, it was a goddamn gas station that had the coldest drinks in bruh, the world. Bruh, he was an asshole. He, he was an ass. Right. Oh, he definitely didn't have patience. Oh, Especially if you wasn't buying gas and you pulled in the, in the car and was like, let me get four uh, Cherokee Reds. Like, you're wasting my time for a dollar. Right. But them motherfuckers was out and they was ice cold. You wasted your time for charging a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and they my fault. Like, you know, you're buying 25 cent sodas. Man, listen, them son of bitches was on fucking tilt. Me and Donnie would go over there and just buy them and just have a bag of them. Listen. So, a whole case of them. Because they stayed cold all day. They was the first, like, the insulated cup. They was the first, uh, what's them little joints called, Louie? Those uh, big metal cups that keep your drink cold for an hour? Them, or, them Stanley joints. Them was them, them, them joints, them Yetis. Facts. <laughs> listen, at that gas station, at Paul's gas station, he had the first Yeti beverages. 
with them fucking Cherokee Reds. Mm -hmm. But listen, after fucking playing nine games of uh, basketball, and somebody got a radio playing all of the Bones fucking greatest hits, that was that shit. Okay, let me ask y'all this. Curveball, out of nowhere. That song, Life's a Bitch, it had two components to it. It had the rapper AZ, and it had Nas. Now, Nas is definitely the people's champ, man. Nas is definitely still putting music out. So shout out to both of these individuals. And this next uh, question is going to be a, a real rough one for me to ask because I hate pitting these two against each other. But that's how it is in hip-hop. Who do you think had the better verse? And, Uwe, I want to ask you first. I mean, shit. I mean, Nas is always that dude. But I think AZ got him on that verse. yeah. I mean, AZ spit on that shit. He, you know what I mean? He, he he showed his ass on that one. Right. And he's the only other person on that record, so on that whole album. That's that uh, Illmatic? Yes, sir. Now, listen, for him to even be on there, what song, like, in the order of songs, what song was that? What, Life's a Bitch? It's like the third song. It was the third song on that LP? Yep. Now, when they dropped that shit, it was probably one of the most profound songs ever to be made because it lets you know life's a bitch until you die. It ain't saying life's a bitch for a little bit or for a couple hours and shit. It's saying this is going to be what it is until you out of this motherfucker. That's 94, too. That came out 94, yeah. April 94. Just think of how ahead of his time it was, man. Right. AZ with that shit. He led off. He had no fucking time spared on that song. Realizing the realisms of life and actuality. Cause that that shit. That a person's well, status depends on salary? And my mentality is money orientated. Man, come on, man. So I agree with you, Louie. Dude, being a guest in this motherfucker, how you feel about it? When we spoke about it off camera, I felt differently. I can't for for a second. I thought you was attacking Nas, and like I read it. Nah, him. nah, that's what he's but one on, of the forefathers, bro. But on that song, I would have to agree. Okay, you say AZ got Nas. Yeah, Wax. I would have to agree with that. Same one. thing. You, you guys know I'm a Nas fan. And me I'm too. We all fan. are, man. But humongous uh, Nas fan. I think AZ went in on that one. That was like <laughs> the only one of the only times. Nas got outshined on his own track. Do you, you think it was I mean? purposely or you know I mean, what I mean? It was it was just that's how it was back in the day. Like if but if you get on the track with me, I'm trying to eat you. I don't give a fuck who you are. Right. Like, I feel like that's the standard. Like right. that's how it should be. I, how, why would he even bring you on his track if you ain't gonna bring it? Right. 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 Which brings up the next one. This is out of nowhere, unplanned, unscripted. Duke, I'm gonna start off with you. That song Renegade. With Eminem and Jay-Z. Everybody knows that answer. Everybody says that answer. Everybody knows that answer. Do you feel like Eminem ate? Yeah, but because he's Jay-Z, so you're <laughs> going to write your best. But Jay-Z had some bars on there. He did. Back but, to the wall, ashy knuckles. But you're going to have to you have to bring your best when you're on the track with the best. Right. And right. it does help that you're one of the best right. lyricists. Now you do just as put this out there. Eminem is a Libra. Sorry about that, Joe. I had to let everybody at home know Nobody. the most creative yeah. thinking is Libras. Shout out to the Libras out there, Libra season. Yo, the, the story behind that song is that song was already done. It was it was uh, it was Eminem and Royce the Five Nine. Yeah, was their song. So Jay Z bought the song. And then took Royce off of it. So the fact that Jay Z oh. heard that verse, those two verses, and still decided to go with it, I'm like, you a brave motherfucker. Cause right. If I'd have heard that shit, I'm like, I don't want no parts of that shit. You, you gotta uh, spit something whack on my <laughs> shit. Do you think it was the fact that he was just spitting that shit, or did he say, "Oh, renegade"? I mean, it was a classic. It's a classic. Song. Right. Yeah. It's a classic, man. That motherfucker. Poured his heart out on that motherfucker. He said, "Do you have any i Do you have any clue what I had to do to get here? I don't think you do. So stay tuned and keep your ears glued to the stereo. So here we go. It's every er. Uh, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Jay Z spit. Or if we was over in England, spat. Yeah, he's one of my favorite artists. I mean, but he's I, up there. But I gotta keep it hundred though. Right. Eminem won that. He won that." Okay. Let me ask y'all this though. You, you hear the um, 
you know, as far as like the Benzino shit with 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 Eminem, I wish he'd stop, man. I get it, but I mean, I'm not even talking about that part. But like, what do you feel about like the whole Eminem is a is a guest in hip hop type thing? Do you think he should be on the top in your top five, or does he does he have, does he deserve that, or is it strictly on just lyrics? What do you what do y'all think about like the uh, the shit that's going on with 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 Eminem as far as like like I said, being the guest in hip hop. Does he represent being a guest well? I don't, I, like, from a person who adores hip-hop, like, I watched it grow as if it was myself. Right. You know, mature, turn into an adult, if you will. I feel like hip-hop is transparent to a degree. Like, I feel like if you're a different race, you shouldn't say any negati- uh, negative negative. Uh, derogatory terms about you know certain situations and go through all the changes but at the same time it's colorless music itself is colorless like I've heard a lot of different songs sang by everybody and they're classics man they're called classics so in a term of him being a guest it would just depend on if you know like, I feel like hip-hop was made for everybody to enjoy, so therefore, everybody could be a part of it. I got you. What you think, dude? I, th- I saw you see you had something to say. I have a lot to say about this. Go ahead. First go of all, hip-hop is black culture. It definitely we is black culture. That. So that's where they bring it from. So let's say that first. With the guests in hip-hop, I, f- I feel both sides. Because he's so dope, he should be just judged off his talent. But on the flip side, I heard... Somebody say on social media, it's hard to put him at the top of something that's black culture, but other races wouldn't do that. You couldn't be a Chinese singer and then be considered the greatest Chinese artist of all times as a black man. They're not even going to vote you that. Right. I never thought about it like that until I heard that. But his talent should just be judged off his talent. I mean, like, like I said, I'm on both sides of the fence. Like, it's hard for me to say that this white guy is the best at a black culture right. thing. No, like, Even though that his talent might say he is, but it's but I'm on both sides, though. You know what right. I mean? So, I really don't know. But as far as number one, no, he's not number one. But he's in the top five, probably. Right. Let me, Definitely. Let, let me ask you this. Some well, was, on, let, 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 wax what you feel Thank about. you. I was about oh, to say. I thought you was trying to tell me that. Cause, no, uh-huh. no. I, I just needed to get mm-hmm. my input. I think he is a guest in the house of hip hop. He's a great guest, but he is one. Um, I, I like him and them. I think he's one of like, you know, one of the best to ever do it. But at the same time, it's hard to say that at any time of my life I was like, hey, put that M and M on and, and let's ride out to that shit. Right. right. So that kind of diminishes his you know, his legacy a little bit. Right. Because he doesn't just make uh, songs or albums that cater to what I'm going through, but right. you know, a lot of people feel that shit. So you're saying it doesn't resonate with the street culture? Though. Not at all. Not at all. I Some have- of it does, but not all of it. Now, for both of y'all, some would say Michael Jackson is the king of pop. Would you guys agree? He is. So, would he be invited into a culture that was set for somebody else? Like what, though? Like. Pop wasn't man Look, like pop, me. Pop, for black every folks. music in this country is black music. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Even, even rock and roll. The, okay. Yeah. On so on the floor, like we made it all. I get you. Rock. You know what I mean? With the Chuck Berry and shit. The right. blues. You know what I mean? All of that. It came from black hey, culture. I mean, I ain't. I ain't sure, but maybe heavy metal or something. Maybe it might have been white culture. I don't know. Right. 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 You know what I mean? But I don't, I don't think there was too much. You know, uh, br- uh, brown and black folks sitting there. Well, uh, that Color Me Bad group, or not Color Me Bad, but... Uh, Living Color. Living Color. Oh, yeah. I mean, you had, you got some cats in Nova Scotia out this motherfucking growing long hair, fucking... <laughs> bear down, bear down, bear down. But, like, to say a, get, a guest for me, I don't know. Are we guests to America? I, I don't know, man. I'm not trying to play the political adversary or any of that. I see like, both sides of it, you know? Correct. Right? Like, like, I don't have the right to say anything because this ain't my shit. Right. I didn't create hip hop like I didn't create the world. So like for anybody to be a guest in anything, I guess it would have to have the creator's blessing. And in which case, I feel like hip hop was provided to us to enjoy on everybody's aspect. 
You got so many rappers in here now that have a, a, a ear for hip hop to where they can display their side of it. You got cats like Jack Harlow. You got cats like Eminem that's one of the greatest to do it. That's why I, w I want to say something about <laughs> Wax said he ain't never said, hey, put on that Eminem. First of all, there was never a time when he was big that you wasn't like playing his music. I don't mean now. Come on, when he was like the mainstream person. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's one. Go ahead, though. Not about to say, I, that maybe a couple songs like The Way I Am, but it's not like if we riding in a car full of niggas and shit. I don't remember anybody ever saying, yeah, yo, put that fucking Eminem on. Like, I'm, I'm with Wax on that, like, maybe a couple of songs, but, like, I don't remember listening to a whole album of, of Eminem with a, with a car full of niggas just riding around and shit. So, yeah. you're, all, so you're saying you only listen to hip-hop that you can relate to? No, no, not at all, but, like, at the same time, like... Because that's what Wax said, you know what I mean? Like, like they didn't live the same lifestyle, so we can't relate to what Eminem was talking about because we didn't pop pills and all that shit, but he's, speaking about but it was still dope music though you know what I mean yeah I, I'm just saying like there were songs on albums that I liked but like I didn't relate to the majority of what the, like what the project was like I never thought true. about killing my mom or, right right true or my baby's <laughs> mom or you know what I mean and a lot right. of the songs that he put out was like just craziness but because it was lyrical I could dig I could dig it. To make sense. Here's, here's, here's my whole take on it. When I first heard that motherfucker, he had a song that he came out with. It was called I Never Knew Why. I Never Knew Why, I Knew Why, I Knew Why. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't do black music. I don't do white music. I do fight music for high school kids. Put lives at risk when I rhyme like this. That shit to me was creative as fuck. Exactly. I'm a no, fuck exactly. I'm an MC of the game. I love hearing that shit be spat. I don't give a fuck what you look like. He could have came down here a Martian. If you spit that shit like that, I'm listening. Me My ears is open. Let me ask you this. He is lyrically dope. Okay. But, but do you think that he would have got the support from the black community when he first came out if he wasn't backed by Dre? Probably not. Because he came out with comedy rap. But right. first, you he would have been that, in the category of Shaggy. You think the hood would have even accepted that no. without somebody like been, Dre? He'd have been in the him. category of Shaggy. That's a good question. He would have never got the chance to show the world how lyrical he actually was because he wasn't doing that at first. Right. Talking about my bummers on your lips and shit. That wasn't lyrical. It was funny, but it sounded good. Right. Then when he got the audience, he started showing us that he actually had real talent. Right. Right. No, I agree. Like, if, if he didn't have that, because Dre was, Dre was a giant in the game, especially at that point. You know what I mean? So just the fact that he co-signed was like, all right, this motherfucker is something different. And then he, then he showed, then he too. he definitely showed his ass and showed us that he was about that shit. You know what I'm saying? But what about Stan? That song Stan. That's oh, one, listen, of, he one got of the some, most creative songs. He got some monster songs. Yeah, I didn't even know it was about anybody when I heard it the first time. I never knew it was about. I thought it was just like, all right, this motherfucker is a little alternative. No, he was talking about cannabis. And I never knew that shit when I heard it the first time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's talking about cannabis. And cannabis even explained something in a song that he wrote. He was like, that that verse when he said uh, something about meeting each other and shit. You know what I mean? Like, we should be together. I yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and cannabis explained that shit on the record. I'm like, damn, my nigga, you shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. He, I wouldn't even owned up to that Hell shit. No. Wow, his career was over when he stepped to LL. Now I, that's much. a whole nother topic, which we can get into in this episode. He killed him with the one line. We ain't got to get into the fans, the money. Hold the on, career. hold on. Let's let's get right back to that the shit, dude. Line. Let's yeah. get right back to that. But what do you think, dude? What? As far as um, the fact that that stand song was about. Uh, another MC who was boiling hot at that time. Not, I, like you said, I wouldn't have admitted to it. <laughs> it was a creative left, chess move. I'd have left that shit right where it was. Hey, nobody Lance, knew. Nobody was, knew, and I wouldn't have told nobody that shit. Yeah. What you think? I'm, I'm on the fence with that one. Like I feel where uh, cannabis was coming from, but at the same time, I need to hear Eminem say that was about 
cannabis right. to act like fully. no he cannabis, no, has cannabis a verse. He said. I, yeah but, but <laughs> because cannabis thinks he wrote it about him doesn't mean he actually no Eminem wrote it. said it was about I him need to oh, hear okay, okay. Did. I didn't hear Eminem say that I yeah. didn't hear cannabis say I did too well I regardless of the fact I see what say he, he said he's, he's trying to talking piggyback about off of that cannabis because he, he definitely kind of was. Because like, he can get some clicks and some likes. Right. right. I you know don't give mean? a fuck. That shit was about <laughs> cannabis. Now. But it, about say, as far as cannabis, like we can talk about, like cannabis had a. I'm like, ready to get right into it now. It was hot as fish grease. Well, then get into it, then, dude. It was. I was a cannabis fan. I was, I was a cannabis fanatic. There's fanatic certain things bit. you don't do. You shouldn't have said nothing to LL. And here's the thing. Mm-mm. Here's the thing. Go ahead. I, I thought he got him in the. Uh, shit. I thought he got LL on yes, that second round knockout. He did. But did LL you? has too much power. Exactly. And that nigga shut us down. 99% of your fans wore high heels. Right. And that man said 99% of your fans don't exist. Negative. It was over. Go home. Go Take home. Ball and go home. It's over. Yes. <laughs> Nothing else said it. Bruh, when he came out with that shit. Because both lines was true. Bruh. <laughs> It came out like he was a fucking king. Remember when we was down your crib on 11th talking about this very same shit? Yeah. Now, mind you, cannabis came out fucking grimy. New York City grime. Boom, doom, doom. Boom, boom. Yeah, boom. Mike Tyson. That's where he had me like, oh, I thought that, I thought that was the better shit. I thought that was the better You're song by smoking far. rock. By far, I thought Cannabis chewed LL. But uh-uh. like I said, LL just had, he had the power. He was LL. Like my, he could get my you guy. shut down. He could get you shut down people, without a, without a people people phone call. People when, don't, re- I'm sorry, I just got to say one thing. People ahead. don't realize the songs that LL make isn't how he actually can rap, though, too. No, I know. Because have you ever just heard LL in the booth just spitting? Like, he don't miss those songs. L- I mean, and he don't L- miss. He was for the ladies and stuff like that. Like, he was more mainstream. I get it. But that I'm, grimy listen, I'm not saying style. I'm not saying cannabis is better than LL in any stretch of the imagination. LL is 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 one of the goats. LL is a god MC. I'm just talking about that second round knockout was better than, than Jack the Ripper or whatever the fuck that shit was called. Is he on the yeah, Mount Rush? Hold on, dude. I think you're right, too. Hold on, dude. Is he on the Mount Rushmore? Who? LL? Yeah. No, because ain't Rushmore only four people? Hold on, dude. Hold I mean, on. I don't know. It depends. I, I haven't gone through my Ru- Mount Rushmore, but he All could right. be. I, we I, get I back to it then. I wouldn't argue if somebody put him on there. This will give everybody a chance to think about this, but let me ask you this. When that song, Second Round Knockout, came out, how did you feel? I felt the same way as dude. I thought, I thought cannabis chewed him until I started like really paying attention and analyzing what they were saying. Right. And cannabis and shit didn't hold any weight. No. And LL it, was was dropping jewels, kind of. Bruh. And then he thanked him for even, you know, being the victim that he was. <laughs> yeah. was like, Thank Damn. you for slaying me. Like, Bruh, when he said, <laughs> we can take it to your show and do it on live, you dig what I'm saying? He said, like, we can get on your show and go verse for verse. Mm-hmm. And then we can get on the horn, call your mom, your your, your your first and second born, and get on the horn and call Minister Farrakhan. <laughs> you know what I mean? When he went through all of that that's, shit. That's the part where I'm like. That's how I felt until I heard that, can I bust? Can I bust? Let's just sit back and think about that for a minute. Can I bust? The word bust <laughs> means to oh, fucking so. fail. Pause. He, yeah, it was yeah. a pause. Word. It's, it's, it was 20, pause. 20, it's 2024 now. <laughs> there wasn't no pause back I then. I hate pausing, man, because y'all <laughs> motherfuckers get y'all's minds out the goddamn got Why did that shit even start? Like, because a bunch of motherfuckers was thinking about a bunch of shit that everybody else had uh, other tendencies on thinking about. I heard my kids saying that like a long time ago. When Me when too. Shit first started. I was, like, I was like, why are y'all saying that? Bruh. But now, after you find out why they said it, you just make yourself say it now. We grew up in the 80s where we didn't mean that shit no, the way the day exactly. fucking proceeded. Regardless of all that, that's horse shit. But I'm just talking about uh, LL. I was just talking shit on LL. Can I, can I bust? But continue your LL rant. Now, when he went and said that shit, can I bust? You're getting ready to fuck up because you fucking with a lion and I'm getting ready to take your fucking head off. Now, you're explaining me I don't even have to say shit. Get on the fucking horn on the show that I got. Nigga, I got my motherfucking FUBU wear that I'm a fucking 
poster board head for. I, I'm the face of FUBU. You want to bring all of that to the light? I'm getting ready to tear your face off. Now, let me ask you this. Why is it that every single person can can pretty much quote second round knockout word for word, but don't nobody know that 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 LL song word for word? Oh, I, only only the only the verse you said. Ninety ninety percent of your fans don't even pussy cat name another, another pussy name another that's line. That's what the important matter. Pussy cat and aluminum foil ready in a boil. You're the only one that knows that because I never sorry. even fucking remember that. That's shit. when he was talking about him being a fucking so cat, and then he called him olive oil. But that second round shit knockout. was fucking funny because he got that little head and shit. He called him olive oil. Listen, we all four of us can recite word for word that second round knockout. Mm-mm. Word for I word. blocked it out of my head no, when hell came through with that shit and dropped that snake palm on it. You recited most of it five seconds ago. But then I resented <laughs> it after I fucking did it. I was like, I hate myself for that shit because I know I'm getting ready so, to drop that L shit. That's why I say. <clears throat> that's why I say that one was a better a better uh, diss track than LLs. Man, you went to Cambodia with fucking uh, can- cannabis. Yeah. But y'all know, <laughs> but you know what the greatest diss track is. Like it shouldn't even be no discussion. What? Like I want to see what y'all think. No vast. Celine. That's Pop. up there. Pop. Thank you. Hit him up. Hit him up. Or because either. those three. When you Ooh, say. Forgot about it. When I say, hey, Duval, fuck you. Like that direct. Right. You right. can't be no clearer than that. Right. I don't care about a metaphor and this and that. Like, I ain't no stand with about another rapper. Pop right. said, Biggie, you ain't shit. Everybody else in your organization. Uh, right. Mob deep and slow. <laughs> and I fucked your bitch. <laughs> yeah. Right. On top of everything else. I mean, it was definitely. It's not even about the lyrics. I ain't talking about it being lyric, just how direct and disrespectful the song was. That's why I said that's the greatest diss track of all time. Listen, I remember the first time hearing that. My floor was on the It ain't the best song. I mean, my jaw was on the I said, my floor was on the (laughs) (laughs) But the first floor came out (laughs) like. No, the first time I heard that, my my jaw was on the floor. I remember Cuzzo pulled up and, and, and put that. She had a tape deck, put that shit in that bitch. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, that was this now. Park went crazy. Now the best diss track is Nas's. Either that's the best one. I think. Man, that that's motherfucker it. was vicious. Wax. Do you remember when Jay Z was at the top of his game and he had that track that he came out with? Is that your bitch? That opened up the floodgates. Mm-hmm. Then he came out with that fucking track with um Takeover. at that summer jam. Takeover. Mm-hmm. Nas came through. With that fucking bomb that you couldn't put out with uh, just regular water. The fire company, if you spray water on that fucking fire, that was a chemical it would have made it go fucking bigger. <laughs> right. I, that song was so disrespectful. Jay-Z even said that when he was dissing and beefing with Jim Jones, he had to bring up Nas in a different beef and shit. He was like... The Jones can't keep up. Well, maybe my nigga Nas, but I got stronger after Ethan. Because mm-hmm. he knew he got murdered in that yeah. shit. <laughs> this is the crazy thing, too, that people don't really talk about. But, like, when Nas went at Jay-Z, okay. he first went at Memphis Bleak. Yeah. So that was, mm-hmm. like, the, the pre- uh, requisite, right. I guess. The prequel, if you yeah, will. like he went at Memphis Bleak and they were throwing subliminals back yeah, and forth. Yeah, I remember that. Jay-Z took over the beef and it was up from there on out. Well, that's you know because I mean? of the shit that transpired between him and you know, Listen, Nas like, and Zach. That Nas Ether beat played a, a vital part in breaking the rock up. You think yeah, so? Hell yeah! That was the chink in the armor. That was they, that was they, they was untouchable after before that. He never thought about and that. And then next thing you know, you, wow. you see that little trickle of blood. You're like oh shit! He, he, he bleeds. Yeah, like, I was just about to say that shit. You see, he's a man. He's Listen, human. He's a man. That's the first Listen, time that I ever draw again. Right, yeah, right after, right after that, <laughs> right after that shit, that shit started going south between him and Dame, and then wow, shit yeah. just shit just trickled out of out of got I out think of hand. Right, damn. So you feel like Nas dismantled the whole rock Nas, fella. Nas broke the rock up. <laughs> Damn, and it was Memphis Bleak's idea. I he said he rock, was the one they got. Fellas. Yeah. Like, Stop. Get off of him. Trying dude. to steal my spot, fellas? Philly's hot rock, fellas. Put you in the pine box, fellas. Come on, so man. You got... <laughs> Foxy kept you hot because you, you got, got your face, face in her puss. puss. Mm. Now you think you can't girls cost you a looks? Negro, Negro please. please. You I know mustache having whiskers like a rat compared, compared to beans, beans you whack. whack. Come on, man. Come on, man. I know that nigga was looking at beans like, fuck. 
Beans was there. Uh, so one already made the album called hey, Blueprint first. Hey, 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 Beans was up there eating beans at. I am. Looking dead and like, You know it. He wasn't lying. Banging them beans and shit like, mm hmm. Nah, I see it. I think that might be the first only time that Jay Z actually went up against somebody that if you don't say he's more superior, that they were evenly matched. Right now, like, now. Jay Z's not better than Nas, and all. Nas might be better than Jay Z, but and, and maybe not. To rewind it, to rewind Fame it, fame wise, bit, all that. No, there's no comparison. I'm but about to, say, to rewind it, when it comes back to Eminem, that's one of my beefs with Eminem is that he don't really go at nobody that's worth a fuck. Right. His him and Lil Wayne was on the same track, but they, I'm talking about he don't go at it. he don't beef with niggas. He he beefs with people. Well, he that, didn't go out and looking for beef still. Yes, I, he did. I he, feel he, like he if went, they would have came looking back, for, he was beefing with like Christina Aguilera and that right. corny ass shit. That but was I, corny though. But what I'm saying is, if I think that if some real MCs would have become it, like I feel like he might have scared them. I think he might have shut his goddamn mouth. You seen what he did to Machine Gun Kelly? That's Machine Gun Kelly. I know. Yeah, I know. I I say that say that but those were the people that stepped. To him though, you ain't never you. heard about I no, guess you. I guess you. no lyrical black artist saying fuck him and him. You know what I mean? Well, I, then, I feel I mean, like he'd have said something about them. Man. Shit, what's his name? Uh, rough. That was the worst. Oh beef. come on! I know. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the, uh, that, that's one of the. He is the hmm. what's his name? Definition of hip hop. It was um, broken glass everywhere. Oh, um, that shit. Melly who was he beefing with? Yeah, Melly Mel. I was like, who was he beefing with? Retire Eminem. Eminem. Retire Because they Eminem. always bring Eminem up. Right. They always call him a guest and some shit. That I feel it was oh, meant yeah. for, you know, granted, black people created it. We get the fucking, we get the, uh, 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 the franchise. We own the franchise. It's not that he's in hip hop. It's the fact that people are trying to crown him the best. Right. That's what it is. I don't think that they care that he's in hip hop. Like something that was built from the black culture, then you're going to crown a white person. Like right. I, I understand it. But, so do I. We all but, understand. But his it. talent is. Undeniable. If he ain't number one, he's definitely like in the top five. <laughs> yeah, it's so he's close. Yeah. You know what I mean? You kill off a couple of niggas, then, then he moves up. You know what I mean? The vice president goes up to the top. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Just kill two people, then he's up there. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I get it. <laughs> so you said you, he's the last one you got. He's like, the vice president, vice president. So right. Right. you kill two people, then he's up there. I got you. you. So, so who's the top? Who's the top five? Give me your top five again. Start with this nigga right here. Man. I gotta think because I don't because I got what one are we right judging off it on? That's the off thing. Of pure fucking rawness. Just the talent. Just yeah. Just or lyricism. lyricism. I'm lyricism. going number one. I'm going number one. You go right after that. There's people in there that you probably won't think about. If my, you nigga, say that. my nigga. My nigga. I hate it like because Scarface. I got three mm -hmm. and then, and they all interchange. <laughs> but this nigga right here, give me a beat that I can freak. And let's drop the rib. Damn that. Y'all niggas know Facts. my deal. Facts. Get him up. Hit him up. You know what I mean? That nigga X. He's in my top five. Don't come at me with no bullshit. Use caution. Because when I wet shit, I dead shit. Like abortion for bigger portions. Of extortion and racketeering. Got niggas fearing. Fuck what you heard is what you hearing. How much darker must it get? How much harder must I hit? See if your heart is nigga split. When, when I, I start a bunch of shit. I like pussy. But not up in my face. So give me three feet. Because when we greet no more than three deep. Niggas see shake. shake. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, all right, that's number one in your book. Who's number two? Uwe. We gonna go mine, Uwe, you, do. No, nah, just do your five. You all right, well, fuck it then. I'm gonna put Nas a second. Because, like, you know what I mean? That, that nigga, man, he had one feature on that album and still fucking rocked the show. On that fucking Illmatic. Okay. My favorite album from him is I Am. Okay. Right. That shit had too many classics. Who's Third, three? Andre 3. All right. Mm -hmm. Fourth is Tupac. And I hate not putting him first, but he's the first at all times. You know what I mean? But fourth, if I'm just going off wrongness. Mm -hmm. Fourth is Tupac. Five is Biggie. Okay. So where all would right. him fall into the He'd category? be right after that. Right after Biggie? Yep, and then Jay Z. Okay. So. All right. See, I'll, all right, let me go. My, I'll do mine. I'll, I'll say <laughs> my favorite MC, number one. I'll probably put Nas, number one. I'll probably put. Um, 
it's like I want to put Pac and Big together and shit, but like, you almost they're have just to interchangeably like linked together. You forever. almost have to, but I'll I'll put um, I'll put Big then Pac, then I'll go. Really? Yeah. I just, I don't come know. back. It's all right. Don't I mean, come back. Listen, my it, top five changes. Flops, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, telling saying, don't come saying, back. Yeah. So over there with no, Biggie. No, 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 no. It ain't like that. Listen, my top five. <laughs> It, like you're, it's subjective. My I top know. five can change from Tuesday to Wednesday I to know. Thursday. Fact. It's like blood Same pressure. pressure. Right. Top five is too hard. Yeah, right, it's for real. Hard. Especially if there's no like category. But right. like, so I'll say three stacks. Of course, I'll put him number four. Draper. Right, and then probably five. I'm gonna go rock him. You stinking go rock him. rat. Because rock him changed the game. I about that mother. All right, who y'all? Who y'all got? What you got? I'm probably gonna go Nas number one, and like I said, I always this They're always, always flips. interchangeable. It always flips, but this week I'm gonna go Nas number one, probably Pop number two, Big number three. Then I'm probably gonna go with uh, Jay Z number four, and Jada Kiss number five. Damn. Mm. Both on my fucking top five too, man. And like it's subject to change mm-hmm. next right. week. Where but that's just dope. Where is right? where does Eminem on, on yours real quick, Wax? Probably, where is probably top like, ten, like top ten. eight, nine, or gotcha. ten. Gotcha. Like interchangeable, but yeah. eight, eight cool. nine, or ten. I gotta say this first of all. I gotta shit on y'all for, for a second because I feel like you didn't follow the rules. Y'all said lyricists. I feel like there were some lyricists out there that's better than Biggie and. Pop, no, lyrical I, wise. I, I now, don't believe that. Now the impact goal. of their music, you know what I mean? Uh, like, lyrical? We talking about better than Big? Like, no. Keep big going. was a stretch, but but I'm talking about Pop though. Pop. He was more poetic, right? Right. Like, I got you. Know, and Big was that storyteller, right? But okay, I said that. I said this. It ain't one through five. It's just uh, just a five. Five. Dmx. Big pun. Big Daddy Kane. Nas All and, right. and Rakim. All right. so we're talking about just lyrical, I mean, can't, can't lyrical with, geniuses. Now, yeah. there's other artists out there that's been bigger, more money, more fame, right. all that though. But just their raw talent. Big Daddy Kane's one of them. Oh, Big Daddy Kane was that dude. I, you know, I, you know. I realized nobody said Black Thought or Cool G Rap. I mean, they're both dope. He already crossed my mind. He's one of my favorite too. Me too. Right. Black Thought's a lyrical genius. But as far as like. The Roots? Success. Like, Black Thought really didn't really... Uh, yeah, no, no. Who was on Jimmy Kimmel? Uh, but, but right. What, that's, are we... Like, that's I why I asked what we judging it on. In right. general. Like, I, I didn't... Like, success... Kind of... It plays a part, but, like, you know... I I didn't, like, mention that because I that was, like, the last thing on my mind. It I was just you. mainly, like, lyricism. Right. But nobody said cannabis or, you know... Cannabis had two songs Reggie that Noble. were real dope. Or yeah, Reg is dope. Yeah, uh, or Method, Method Man. man. Yeah, but see they're, what I'm they're like, in my top so many, twenty. Cannabis so ain't. I mean, like he's not even in the top ten or fifteen. Nah. There was too many lyrical nah, geniuses yeah. out there. I'm yeah. sorry. Cannabis like, had one track that was just like Cannab- you had to listen to it. It was that Beth uh, Buckingham Palace. Right. Cannabis to me was like the Bo Jackson of rap. Like what could have been? Damn, that's giving him a lot. Yeah, I mean, he was that nigga for a, I mean, if you like said Trent Dilfer or some shit like that, <laughs> I, Trent Dilfer, I could dig that. Trent Dilfer was never that nigga. I mean, he could have been. No, he I, wasn't. Isn't that what it is? I was never never OJ or something. He could have been. What could have been? <laughs> Trent Dilfer was never, ever going to be that. I mean, man, man, Trent Dilfer had a couple of successful seasons. Listen, if, like I said, Cannabis was on a run that he, he, if he'd he have picked the right motherfuckers to be around and the right Pathway to take and not go at LL Cool J because that was an asshole. He had the second or third Jovis verse off four three two one. It was the Canadian in them, right? But, but the that Canadian held, that held it but back. You, oh, but which, if you understand what I'm saying, is like because Bo Jackson was dope, but then he got hurt. But I get it. That's why I brought up Trent Dilfer. You're giving this motherfucker Bo Jackson. That nigga was running 91 yard but, touchdowns like it wasn't nothing. Is he, that in, was is he the, in the Hall of Fame? Who, Bo? Yeah. No. Will he get in the Hall of Fame? No. Exactly. So he was the shit, but he then he got hurt, and then he wasn't so shit. Was, I, so I, was I Trent Dilfer. I feel like he, he, he went after the wrong people too soon. Yeah, that's what I'm because saying. Because that's what music was then. Right. Who, who, who can you get into a beef with to make yourself 
Well, no, this is the man, thing, though. He just chose the wrong people. Cannabis didn't go after LL first. He that, just said yeah. some ill shit right. that he, said he took girl. offense, yeah. to, offense right. to. Let right. me get that microphone and on. Then, on, on the yeah. same song, LL dissed him, so he, it was like he had to come back with something. Right. He said, because like, he snatched his mic up Yeah, he should have bomb never right said no but, shit. Like, let me borrow that microphone. But at, at a certain point, you just got to eat it. You got to eat that and be like, all right, you know what? I ain't. But he just was like, fuck that. When we all took it that same way, though? Yeah. Probably. Oh, if, the hell if, yeah. Like, y'all spitting and then... This nigga's like, let me take that mic off your arm, Mr. Right. Bar. You'd be like, nigga, what? Nigga. You, you went to the fence today. I would have, but at the same time, if you want your career to keep going, you can't go at a nigga that got... Shut the fuck up. That got influence... Around so the globe. take the ass whooping, but you then as a to. man, you got to. You know, I mean, I, just, it, I mean, I, I, I mean, I get it. You get it. If you're a man, you, you would recognize it. you're wrong. Like, oh, I fucked up by saying this. If you're a man, right, right. but that you know was paying I mean? homage, a man. Hey, let me borrow that sweatshirt, man. That's hard. Man. That's what he thought. And then you and being then, like, fuck Illy, I don't give a fuck because he's silly. Like, mm-hmm. damn, what? <laughs> what the borrow the fucking sweatshirt? Right. Like, no, man. You but it, I, I wanted it permanent. I wanted to borrow it permanently. It was some petty shit. It was petty. The wild shit about it is my bad, dude. I ain't gonna cut you off. He actually went and got a tattoo with oh, it blowing up. Right. You know well, I mean? that was afterwards. I know, but I mean, I'm I'm saying he, he didn't learn from his mistakes. Right. And he still but that did. is weird, though. He didn't learn, and he was like, fuck it, I'm gonna get a tattoo with a microphone blowing Bruh, up. Bruh, that's like, weird, though. Asking for, like, hey, man, let me get that tattoo that you have of your name up here on your shoulder. Like, that's, that's my name. Like, that's me. <laughs> that's my it's my ego. But, you know, I, like I said, Eddie... <laughs> But LL was just a giant in the game, and he had a lot of influence, and he he got him blackballed. One one, much. one last beef I like to bring up. Speaking of, and Benny Siegel is doper than Hove and all the rest of that. How you feel about that beef between Jada and Benny? <clears throat> That was that was dope. Who you think it won? was good for hip hop? Jada. 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 Because I, he because he's more superior. I, in my opinion. Me too. Jada you know, Kiss is one of my favorite lyrics. Me too. You know what beef I like with Jada that was better than uh, being That's in it. Jada? Nope. Uh, Jada Kiss and, uh, yep. I knew you was going to yep. say that. Sorry, Miss Jackson. That shit. <sighs> that shit was cold. That was a fucked up concept to yeah. do. Leave your braids on the fucking side of the yellow... Uh, they was talking to his dead mom. <coughs> yeah. Whoa, wait a minute. They, they wait, went what? In. You never heard they that? that shit? Oh, no, that was 50. Damn, I tripped out. Was, wait, go back, go back. Who said what about yeah. his dead mom? It was, uh, it was Jada and Styles, and Styles P. P. They was beefing with 50 Cent. And they had yeah. that song, Sorry Miss Jackson, mm-hmm. with, you know, 50 Cent's last name is Jackson. Right, right. So they, they're rapping to 50 Cent's dead mom talk, <laughs> and just killing him. Wait, what? Tell, him, telling her he ain't shit and, and calling him a man. Let go listen to that shit. That shit was Yo, cold. It's that, that wild. Was, I'm like, these niggas had no, 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 yeah, give a fucks about 50. They was ready to shank this. Nigga. How are we not talking about that? This song, you know, <laughs> gotta, I don't even care what the lyrics are. Just the fact, just the concept of this song. And they're and, and they're just, calling they're calling 50 her, her daughter and shit. Mm, the whole yeah. song. They refer to him as her the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> so they were doing pronouns way before there were. Right. That's what's right. Look at that. Sin Treaders. Sin Treaders. Sin Treaders. Tre- yeah. Trend Center? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> said Sin Treaders. I said it back. <laughs> I was about to argue it down, too. Like, you know what it is, nigga shit. He was like, Sin Treaders. <laughs> hey, Wax, he said it like it was a uh, store. Sin Treaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, a, to a corner near you. Sin Treaders. <laughs> you know what it is. Sin Treaders. Auto Supply. Like that motherfucker meant that shit, but nah, yeah, nah, I feel like Jada fucking went completely ham on everybody that he sat down in front of. He had a couple different. Jada's a fucking him. beast, man. He's a mm-hmm. baron, if you will, man. Right. He's a fucking beast, man. He knows how to fucking get in and out of that motherfucking shit with bare minimal scratches, man. Dude's a beast, man. He's a lyrical giant, man. Yo, yo, y'all see that shit, man? I think I see a light, man. Let's get the fuck out of here, y'all. All right. Hey, listen, it was dope, man. Let's roll. Yo, <coughs> fellas, we came, mm-hmm. we saw, we yeah. delivered. Yeah. Dude, thanks for coming back, man, giving us your your opinion, your viewpoint on everything that we did, yes, discussed about, talked about. Hey, Wax, ooey, 
We're going to be back here next week. Same time, same location, different message. Peace.